live from the parking lot of Sprouts Farmer's Market. It is Tuesday and we are 45 minutes late. I have to apologize as if it was my fault. It was, it, it was my fault. I contributed to the delinquency of... There was no delinquency. It's a uh, good morning. Here, let's just switch the camera around. To the person whose fault it was. No, <laughs> it's uh, Thanksgiving. Well, Thanksgiving. What happened? What happened? You did it again. Well, I didn't do anything this time. Let's see here. Somebody did. I hope you're still here because it just somebody just uh, confirmed that we're still here. Good morning again. Okay, let's see. It's not working. It is a good morning. Would I see Mitch is watching? But let's see if anyone else is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, we're watching. Hi. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Mary. Hi, Hi Bree. Bree. Oh, we miss um, Bree so much. So. I, I, oh. Well, that's for everybody. Uh, uh, good morning. It's Thanksgiving week. And so most of my relatives are dead, are too far away. I have Lana and the turtle that I'm grateful that I have here. Cold comfort. Cold comfort. Yeah. Well, the turtle is cold comfort. <laughs> <laughs> She's a reptile. Uh, uh, Anyway, uh, let's stop talking about dead relatives on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful at Thanksgiving. Oh, anyway, we had to go to Trader Joe's today, too, because we usually go on Thursday. So we're doing all our shopping. That's why we're late. So uh, I'm grateful for Lon. Oh. And, and because, well, because without him, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to. I can't drive here to go shopping. So I'm grateful for everybody out there who supports us in every way uh, by comments or patronage of some kind, whatever level. Uh, we would not survive physically, and I'm, or even emotionally. Or even <laughs> reading like, my like books. The comments too. Even it's, reading my books when they. When they, yeah, they buy the Even if they, they don't like them. them. Yes. Yeah. And anyway, and Lon's working hard on, on a new tarot book, so he's 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 actually working hard. And uh, I'm grateful uh, to Lon because of, there would be no Jean Paul and me and Alex without Lon, so indirectly. So I'm going to talk about lamp, the oh, lamp. Oh, the lamp. What is your magical weapon, St. Constance? My favorite, if we, as if you're allowed to have favorites. Sure. Uh, the, the, well, I've always liked the magical lamp the best. And. Um, Because I think it's a, well, who doesn't want to be the light of the world? <laughs> I certainly <laughs> when do. When we're inspired, we are the light of the world. So when you're going with your families or, or just one person or, or alone on Thanksgiving, because you're not ever alone, really. we're all connected anyway, but, you know, physically, um, if people tend to argue and stuff, if you get, well, it's, it's classic thing that Americans complain about arguing on Thanksgiving with their relatives and friends, but that's not necessary. You just um, imagine them all with rays coming out of their head. <laughs> if you live long enough, you, you, you get your revenge. Revenge. I, I, I loved all my relatives. I still oh. love all my relatives living dead. And they, I always did imagine them with rays coming out. I mean, I didn't yeah. have to imagine. I think they did. Uh, so so anyway, be, be the light of the world to whatever group you're going to be in. And uh, all that does is share it. And they'll, they'll do it to the next group they go to and share it with each other. So enjoy the light of the world on Thanksgiving, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. And be you. No, please don't. Do light no, up no, no, my no, life. Go away. No. I have nothing to say. To, okay. I'm going. I'm going into a cold grocery store. So I'm bundled up, and it's not too bad in the car. Although it was 39 this morning, which is, you know, 
I have plants covered up. Okay, well, I'm going to try not to turn it off while I reverse it, like I always do. Hi, I'm back. Thank you, dear. Go enlighten the people at Sprouts. We enlighten each other there. Get the code to the bathroom. We bath enlighten each other there. Get the code talk. to the bathroom for me. They, only once was I allowed to have it, and then I forgot it. So, so that was worth I don't know if you can see me, but because it's so sunny and bright here. But uh, anyway. There's blondes hiding in the way of the world. You can't see it. Yes. Well, you know when you're the sun, everything around you looks black. No. It Ex reflects your light. Except, it reflects your light. Except the little pieces of, of dirt. Oh, God. <laughs> The the no, 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 the no. cold Give rocks me. that no, no. that orbit you. <laughs> Boy, I don't. That's no. awful. <laughs> well, I know how to clear the room. Anyway, uh, as Constant mentioned, uh, yeah, I am working uh, on a book, and when I'm working on a. Uh, on a book, everything else uh, uh, sort of fades away as I'm uh, trying to desperately uh, uh, get it all out, as we say in the OTO. Uh, and uh, I, w I was thinking about uh, the aces and, uh, you know, Kether on the Tree of Life and trying to... Uh, to uh, have a, a brief discussion on the singularity of of existence, the the one, the uh, the the crown of the of the tree of life, the singularity itself, and then wisdom is number number two, uh, which is just the number one reflected, and and understanding, which is number number three, uh, uh, bina, and, and together. As I repeat over and over again, one, two, and three, the supernal triad, there is just one thinking about itself. Oh, that's my reflection, and oh, I'm not my reflection, okay? It's still the singularity, duality, as, as we understand it, uh, trying to live in the, the macrocosm of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, Tends more like a microcosm, but uh, uh, in in doing so, I was I was uh, uh, going through uh, Crowley's book four, part two, which is called Magic, and uh, what we understand and as we recognize as magic and theory and practice is really book four, part. Three. Book four, part one and two is mysticism for chap for uh, part one and magic for part two. And in uh, part two, magic, Crowley goes through the magician's weapons, the wands, the cups, the sword, uh, the pentacle uh, or disc. Uh, the, and even the oil and the flail and the, uh, the chain and uh, all of the magical weapons. And he, and he sort of gives a, a definition of uh, what these weapons actually are within the, the, the character, the makeup of the magician himself or herself. But chapter 11 is called The Lamp. Now, uh, Constance didn't get to talk about it very much, but she's always said her, her magical weapon is the lamp. And uh, over the years, she's collected, uh, just for our living room, just table lamps that uh, carry with them uh, sort of magical uh, dimensions. But it's always so, I always thought it was so sweet that her magical weapon is the is the the lamp 
and it's the lamp that the hermit holds uh, to give his light to the to the to the world. And the lamp is 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 kether, not only above the abyss, but uh, uh, even the, the the singularity of the supernal triad itself. So I want to share with you what he says in Magic, Part Two, Chapter Ten, The Lamp. In Liber A, Vel Armorum. The official instruction of the AA for the preparation of the elemental weapons. It is said that each symbolic representation of the universe is to be approved by the superior of the magician. To this rule, the lamp is an exception. It is said, quote, a magical lamp shall burn that shall burn without wick or oil, being fed by the aether. This shall he accomplish secretly and apart, without asking the advice or approval of his adeptus minor." Unquote. This lamp is the light of the pure soul. It hath no need of fuel. It is the burning bush inconsumable that Moses saw, the image of the Most High. This lamp, excuse me, this lamp hangeth above the altar. It hath no support from below. Its light illuminates the whole temple. Yet upon it are cast no shadows, no reflections. <clears throat> it cannot be touched, cannot be extinguished. In no way can it change. For it is utterly apart from all those things which have complexity, which have dimension, which change and may be changed. When the eyes of the Magus are fixed upon this lamp, not else exists. The instruments lie idle on the altar. That light alone burns eternally. The divine will that was the wand is no more, for the path has become one with the goal. The divine understanding that was the cup is no more, for the subject and the object of intelligence are one. The divine reason that was the sword is no more, for the complex has been resolved into the simple. And the divine substance that was the pantacle is no more, for the many has become the one. Eternal unconfined, unextended, without cause and without effect, the holy lamp mysteriously burns without quantity or quality, unconditioned and sempiternal is this light. It is not possible for anyone to advise or approve, for this lamp is not made with hands. It exists alone forever. It has no parts, no person. It is before I am. Few can behold it, yet it is always there. For there is no here, nor there, no then, nor now. All parts of speech are abolished, save the noun. And this noun is not found in either in human speech or in divine. It is the lost word, the dying music of whose sevenfold echo is E A O and A U M. Without this light, the magician could not work at all. Yet few indeed are the magicians 
that have known of it, and far fewer are they that have beheld its brilliance. The temple and all that is in it must be destroyed again and again before it is worthy to receive the light. Hence, it is so often seems that the only advice that any master can give to any pupil is to destroy the temple. Quote, whatever you have and whatever you are, unquote, are veils before that light. Yet in so great a matter, all advice is in vain. There is no master so great that he can see clearly the whole character of any pupil. I'm going to repeat that. Those of you who are under tutelage, there is no master so great that he can see clearly the whole character of any pupil. What helped him in the past may hinder another in the future. Yet, since the master is pledged to serve, he may take up that service on these simple lines. Since all thoughts are veils of this light, he may advise the destruction of all thoughts. And to that end, teach those practices which are clearly conductive to such destruction. These practices have now fortunately been set down in clear language by order of the AA. In these instructions, the relativity and limitation of each practice is clearly taught, and all dogmatic interpretations are carefully avoided. Each practice is in itself a demon which must be destroyed. But to be destroyed, it must first be evoked Shame upon that master who shirks any one of these practices, however distasteful or useless it may be to him. For in the detailed knowledge of it, which experience alone can give him, may lie his opportunity for crucial assistance to the pupil. However dull the drudgery, it should be undergone. If it were possible to regret anything in life, which is fortunately not the case, it would be the hours wasted in fruitful practices which might have more profitably, might have been more profitably, prof, <laughs> it's a good line, I don't want to screw it up. If it were possible <clears throat> to regret anything in life, which fortunately is not the case, it would be the hours wasted in fruitful practices which might have been more profitably employed on sterile ones. For Nemo, Nemo, no man, Nemo, the name of the master of the temple, Nemo who has crossed the abyss, Nemo who is no more. No man. For Nemo, in tending his garden, seeketh not to single out the flower that shall be Nemo after him. And are we not told that Nemo might have used other things than those which he actually does use? It seems possible that if he had not the acid or the knife or the fire or the oil, he might miss tending just that one flower which was to be Nemo after him. Now, I've read that many, many times before for many, many years. But it was just in the context of me trying to give myself further light, if you will, on the, the nature of the singularity, of the nature of the crown, of the nature of Kether, 
of the nace, the fundamental nature of all the aces in the in the tarot. The nature of that smooth point of wall to wall singularity that I ran across that and looked at it in a whole new light. Anyway, thank you so much for, for being patient this morning. And um, I know we were 45 minutes late, but uh, that's it for today. I hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. Well, I hope I've been on.